Jeffrey Lewis Band. Yeah. To begin, I will show a music video. I hope you can see. If you can't, maybe it's better to look at the screen.
There's puddle sky. There is 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 puddle sky. And a puddle. She now had a witness to back up her story. She looked at me with her spectacled eyes and said, see, I told you to the two other guys. And my tale might have ended right there and then, except that we started talking about Leonard Cohen and how his lyrics were cool and how he sang so sincere that it must have been true and it happened right here. Although usually right off the bat people don't find me that great. There we were laughing and strolling like we could really relate. And though we didn't mention the headline, it was eluded. And our conversation was better because her friends weren't included. The guys were more into each other, at least that's how it seemed to me. I heard the faint knocking of opportunity. Although it's easy for me now, upon my looking back, to think of all the things I could have said to make me the Mac. Just keep the sad truth in mind as I tell this to you, that we really only talked for a minute or two, and I never got her name, and she never got mine, but in those couple of short minutes we had a pretty good time. on top of that, although you might not believe it, this is what she said to me next. I'll repeat it. The line about getting the blowjob that Leonard sings. She said it made her want to do naughty things. And right about then, I should have asked if she knew what the Chelsea charged if we got a room for two. But I didn't, and I know that I'm a schmuck, don't you doubt it? The only thing I did was write this stupid song about it. But if I was Leonard Cohen or some other songwriting master, I'd know to first get the oral sex and then write the song after. Cause you can practice writing songs about romance every day. But if you haven't loved, then you'll have nothing to say. We could have given each other head on Leonard's same on May bed, but I was too shy to suggest it. And so instead, when the three of them stopped to look through a pub window, I said goodnight, although I hadn't quite meant to. 
and waved as we walked, although I wouldn't forget her, especially since she mysteriously said, see you later. So now every time I'm walking, I hope that we meet, and on purpose I always go up 23rd Street, where the sign glowing red says the Chelsea Hotel, where Sid Vicious and my friend drug dealer Dave once dwelled. Except that life doesn't work out the way it does in old songs, and that's why we sing new ones to say what really goes on. But if I could see her again, we could pick up where it ended. Maybe I'd play her this song, and maybe she wouldn't get too offended. If you hang out there a minute, I'll tell you why. There's more to this situation than meets the eye. Cause you might think that it's sad, and you might think it's pathetic that I sing this song and that she'll never know it. But if you think for a minute about just what that means, then you'll realize it's actually a wonderful thing that all around the world there may be folks singing tunes for the love of other people that they barely knew. And it puts a smile on my face, yes it do. And let me tell you that you ought to be smiling too. Cause the next time you're feeling kind of lonesome and blue, just think that someone somewhere might be singing about you. So who knows if I ever find her again, we'll see. This whole time she could have been singing about me. Probably not. Is Toby Goodson around? Why are you doing that? Why don't you get me a piece of pie? I wish we were somewhere else. Why don't we go there? I wish we could do that. I wonder if we could go to the store today. Could you get off the couch? I really want to sit on the couch. Could you get off the couch, please? Please? Could someone get off the couch? Could you get off the couch? Could you get me a sandwich? Why don't you get me a sandwich? Could you get me a cigarette? Who is the cigarettes? Who is the keys? collaboration and some incredible songs have been written and recorded in the basement this week. Maybe they'll come out with a CD of them soon, I hope. Shadow of an umbrella, the 
chasing the westward sun. The eagle landed singing his eagle song. And the kids behind the sand castles look out to hear the call. But the song was gone before the setting sun.
Listen to that cool breeze blow you out. What? It's easy for you to say you were the fan in front back. All I said was listen to that cool Ready, breeze blow you out. Yeah. You, is your guitar on? Yeah. yeah. Truck stop hell, I will collapse. Why would, would you, you ask, ask me that? that? Why would you ask me that? Why would you ask me that? on this one. Uh, we went to Glasgow and we played this song with Dave and it sounded great and I'd love to do it again. Uh, you didn't warn him ahead of time. I sort of warned him a little bit, but... Ah, there he is. Fellow Dave is here with his friend Frannick. They're in a band called the Wave Pictures. And I know it's hot in here, but you have to come tomorrow night to see Herman Dune, uh, Mountain Goats, Wave Pictures. Who else? Kim uh, Dawson. Kim Ya, of course. Tell us some other interesting facts. Uh, Dave's from Nottingham. Is that a guitar? Oh, that's a I'm using uh, Frannick's bass. Thanks. Thanks, Frannick. Let me use your bass. Another girl! 
No LFT. People, people, creeps. Take the lead from my youth. Take the lead from my youth. I would love to play this one. And it goes into the DI that's just there. Chadborn is going to be up. Uh, that's Jack Lewis, Anders Griffin, Jeffrey Lewis, Dave of the Wave Pictures, uh, David Herman Dune, Rachel Lipson, uh, Q, and Andre were playing the horns before. Well, there's a few different things we could do at this point. I guess I could do something solo, I could do something with the band that could show a video, I could do a. I think uh, we can work it out. Uh, this is a long song about Will Oldham.
Or actually, whatever you want to do, really. Consider them our foes. Go home to our four roommates after paying big bucks for rock star shows. What a nightmare, what a horror. I don't want no part of this. Get me off this crazy ride. I'm gonna puke, I'm gonna piss. I'd rather kill myself, I'd rather just relax or not exist. But you say you want to do an email or review. What the heck, I can't resist. Hey mom, guess what? Today I did another magazine interview. Tell me that's great, you're really famous. Yeah, and I'm 27 too. I kind of thought I'd go up to do stuff that would benefit humanity. It's getting harder to tell if this artist's life is even benefiting me. Because today, while well, I was on the way to waste supply the money making an album on the L train in the morning, I was positive I saw a little older. He was wearing the same sunglasses he had on stage at the Bowery Ballroom. And since I was dealing with need of answers, I just went right up and asked him. I said, Will, body, prints, palace, whatever, what do you think about it? Is it worth being an artist or an indie rock star? Are you better off without it? It's like maybe the world would be better if we were all on creative drones. No dead child that dreams to haunt us a decent job and decent home. And if we had some extra time, we'd do real things like the promo piece. Become scientists or history teachers or uncorrupt police at least. Come on, Will, you gotta tell me. I grabbed and shook him by the arm. The L train was leaving Bedford with a thousand white twenty somethings crowded on. He opened his mouth to speak, but it was lost in the bumbling of the wheels. We were thrown together in a corner, and I yelled, Tell me, man, for real. You're living comfortable, I assume, even if you're not quite a household name. You've reached a pretty high level of success and critical acclaim. The L train got the first avenue and a bunch of people piled out. I was staring into his sunglasses, my voice was rising to a shout. Listen, you fucking palace brother, body prince of all this shit. You're like the king of a certain genre, but even you must want to quit. Like if you hear a Neil Young record, or a Bob Dylan, or whatever, you must start thinking, yeah, folks like me, but I won't really be that good at it. And the thing on top of that is I'm sure probably even Dylan too probably stays up nice, wishing he was as good as Howard Ginsburg up to me. Don't 